Okay, let's just work through question 3.1 on arithmetic circuits uh, here on the board. Um, part A asks for the truth table for a half adder and recall the inputs x and y and the outputs c and zc's for carry and let's remind ourselves that the place values of the inputs are both 1 and in the outputs uh, z has place value 1 and the carry has place value 2. So we tabulate all possible inputs by counting to 3 and then we generate the outputs by adding. So 0 plus 0 is 0, 0 plus 1 is 1, 1 plus 0 is 1, and 1 plus 1 is 2. And we can check that uh, if we multiply each bit by its place value and calculate the totals on the left and on the right, we have 0 and 0, 0, 0 and 1 times 1, 1, 1 times 1 and 0, 1, 1 times 1 plus 1 times 1 is 2, and then here, 0 plus 0 is 0, 1 times 1 plus 0 times 2 is 1, and again, and then 0 times 1 plus 1 times 2 is 2. So the total place values of the bits stays the same, but the number is arranged into uh, a regular place value binary number. And if we use the OLOOK method to figure out how to actually build one of these things from logic gates, we see that this is the truth table for AND, and this is the truth table for exclusive OR. Job done. Okay, so for part B, we're asked to construct a full adder from two half adders and one other gate. Okay, so let's do that. We'll have part B, three input signals, and uh, they'll have place value one. And we'll end up with two output signals, one with place value 1, and one with place value 2. And it's called a full adder because we have enough inputs, three of them, to completely fill up the outputs. Um, okay, now let's try to remember how to add. It's, uh, it's relatively straightforward. You see any two uh, signals with the same place value and you add them. Uh, we can use half adders for this, and the good strategy is to start with the lowest place value and work towards the highest, and uh, to start for each place value with the leftmost signals. So starting on the left, well we only have one place value, that's one. Uh, we fill in a half adder, and out comes signals of place value 1 on the right and 2 on the left. Okay, now we still have two signals of place value 1. So we fill in another half adder to add them and out comes one signal of place value 1 and another of place value 2. Okay, now we have only one signal of place value 1 remaining, so that has to be the output at place value 1. And we have two signals at place value 2 to add. But we know there's no way there can be a carry into a third column, so we need only do uh, the, uh, uh, the, the right digit that you get from adding these two signals. We know at most one of them can be 1, so we fill in here an exclusive OR. Okay, so that's part B. 
completed. Part C says, using three full adders, construct a ripple carry adder for two three-bit inputs with carrying. Okay, so let's see what's coming in and what's going out. We'll have one three-bit input, well, this is part C, uh, with place values one, two, and four. And we'll have another three-bit input, place values one, two, and four. And we'll have a carry coming in with place value one. Now, what will be going out? We'll have uh, an output signal, a three-bit number with place values one, two, and four, and a carry out with place value eight. And how do we build the circuit? Well, same as before. We know how to add. We start with the lowest place value, except that now that we have a, a full adder that's bad to its friends, uh, we, can, uh, uh, we can add three things at a time, which is great, because three things at place value one is exactly what we've got. The, the two bits coming from the input and the initial carry. So we feed these into a full adder. signals of place values 1 and 2. And the 1 goes to the answer, just like when you're adding up on paper, and the 2 carries into the next column. Now we have two signals of place value 2. And again, we can add them with a full adder. Outputs. This time we're one place to the left, so the, um, we'll get a 2 and a 4. And the 2 is our last signal of place value 2, so that goes to the output. And the uh, 4 carries into the next column. So each full adder does one column's worth of adding. So finally, we add up the 4s. two from the input and one carried from the previous addition and out come signals of place value four and eight. And that gives us the third bit of our number and the carry out. Okay, that's part C. So far, so bookwork. Uh, but for part D, we, uh, we read, due to funding cuts, we have only three half adders and three XOR gates, show that we can still compute three-bit addition, assuming the carry-in is zero and the carry-out is not needed. So what are we being asked to do? We're being asked to produce a special case of this circuit that satisfies our, our customer's requirement. In effect, our customer has told us that they will only ever feed a zero into this input. So we might, not, might as well not have it as an input. And we've also been told that our customer, the user of this circuit, does not care about what comes out uh, in the, the carry out column, the eights column. So what we have is a bunch of machinery which is taking care of all the possibilities, but we know only some are possible, and a bunch of machinery which is uh, delivering uh, a value that's not used. So maybe we can cut down on the amount of machinery involved. Right, let's then have a look at what happens to this zero. Okay. Let me have a look inside this full adder. You see that inside it there's a half adder and a half adder and an XOR wired up like 
this. Now, what happens when we feed in a zero to the right-hand input of a half adder? Well, let's check. Let's look at the truth table. We're considering the cases where y is zero. That's this case. And this case. And can you see that in that situation, the carry will always be zero, and uh, the uh, uh, output z on the right will always be the same as the input coming from the left. That's to say, this half adder literally adds nothing. So we can, uh, we can simplify the machinery uh, just by uh, removing this component and what were we saying? That the output on the right is a copy of the input from the left and the output to the left is zero. But now what happens if we XOR something with zero? Well, zero XOR zero is zero, and one XOR zero is one. So again, this component is doing nothing. We can replace it with a piece of wire. And this is just what you would expect if we treated the problem as a whole new adding circuit problem. We would have had two input signals with place value 1, and we'd have added them with a half adder, sending the output uh, to the output of the whole circuit and carrying the carry to the left. OK, so now uh, we have... Uh, two signals of place value 2. And we've got uh, three signals of place value 2. And we've got no option except to add them properly. So we're going to have to use the whole of our full adder here. So there's going to be a half adder here and a half adder here and an XOR gate there. And all of those signals are crucial. But now, let's see what happens if we investigate this full adder and get rid of the stuff which produces this unneeded output. So, again, we look inside the box. A half adder. A half adder. XOR gate. Okay, so we've decided that we don't need this output. So let's start getting rid of things we don't need. Working our way up the wire. What's making that signal? Oh, this XOR gate. We don't need that either. But that means we don't need the left output of this half adder. We need only the right output. That's the thing which corresponds to this component. And that's an XOR gate. So we can replace this half adder with XOR. And similarly, we didn't need the left output of this half adder, the carry. We only needed the output going to the right. So again, we can replace this component by an XOR gate. And now let's check how many of each component have we used. Three half adders, three XOR gates. We've brought the problem in exactly on budget. We used the half adders where we needed to send a carry to the left, but once we had arrived at 
the leftmost output, our third bit, and were told that we no longer needed a further carry out, we were able to make do with XOR gates instead of half adders. So that's part D complete.